Hello friends, this video on system of particles and rotational motion part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. We will now talk about vector product of vectors. So we all are familiar with what are vectors, what is a scalar product or dot product of vectors. So, so here we will talk about vector product of vectors. So you might be wondering that suddenly out of uh, the discussion on system of particles, why are we suddenly studying about the vector product? Well, that's because as we start discussing about the rotational motion, we will talk about several quantities which describe the rotational motion. For example, we'll talk about torque, angular velocity, angular momentum, and these are some of the quantities which make use of vector product. So that is why before going into detail of each of these quantities which describes uh, which describe the rotational motion of a system of particles, it is better that we know what is vector product so that it becomes easier for us to understand each of them. So let us suppose, so how do we define vector product? If you have two vectors A and B, so how do we define the vector product of the two vectors? So like as we studied in case of um, scalar product, right? Scalar product is also known as the dot product. So similarly here vector product is also known as the cross product of two vectors. So it is defined in this way. Cross product of two vectors A and B is defined as C is equal to A cross B. So this is how it is denoted A cross B. So this A cross B, what does it actually mean? It actually means that the magnitude of the product will be A B sine theta where theta is the angle between A and B. So if you have these two vectors, so this is vector A and this is vector B and if this is the angle theta between the two vectors, so if I say what will be A cross B, the magnitude would be A B sine theta. Right? And what about the direction? Because whenever we are talking of vectors, direction plays a very significant role. So in this case, the direction of C will be such that C should be perpendicular to A as well as C should be perpendicular to B. So we can say that the direction of C will be such that it is perpendicular to the plane of A and B. So what does that mean? It means, let us suppose this is my vector A. So this x-axis represents vector A and this y-axis represents vector B. So the cross product of A and B which is represented by the vector C should be such that C is perpendicular to B. C is also perpendicular to A. So that is possible only when C is perpendicular to the plane containing A and B. So this is the plane containing A and B and C is perpendicular to this plane. So now the question is how do we always ensure the direction of this cross product? That what should be the direction of the cross product? Because in this case we have taken a relatively simpler example, right? That if this is the direction of A along x-axis, direction of B along y-axis. So that's quite obvious that z-axis being perpendicular to the plane of x and y should be the direction of C. So we follow a convention or a rule in order to find out the direction of cross product and we call this rule as this right hand thumb rule. So what do we do? We, we just curl all our fingers in the direction of A cross B. So let us suppose if I want to find out the direction of A cross B then we curl our fingers in such a way that it curls along the direction from A to B. So here if you see here the fingers are getting curled from A to to B. So if all your fingers are getting curled in this fashion, your thumb points towards the direction of C. So here if, if you see, your thumb is pointing towards the upward direction. So this thumb is actually denoting the direction of the cross product. Similarly, let us suppose that if I say what would be the direction of the cross product B cross A. So in that case, what would happen? All your fingers should curl from B to A. So how is that possible? If you want, you can try it. Uh, I mean on your own, then you can see that if you want to curl all your fingers from B towards A, you have to curl the fingers in this direction and that is possible only when your thumb points towards the downward direction. So in this case, your thumb will point in the 
downward direction and therefore the direction of the cross product will be downward. So in this case A cross B is upward but B cross A is downward. Right? So this is how we find out or we determine the direction of the cross product. Now while there, there is one important point to note here is that while applying the rules to determine direction, rotation should be taken through the smaller angle between A and B. For example, let us suppose if this is my vector A and this is my vector B. So we will always consider this angle theta because we are curling our fingers along this angle theta. If I say A cross B, I am trying to curl my fingers from A to B. It shouldn't happen that you curl your fingers in this fashion from A to B. So the finger should always be curled along the acute angle between A and B. Right? Okay. So this is my cross product. So let us now look at some of the properties of vector product. The first property being that vector product is not commutative. So what do I mean when I say that it is not commutative? It means that A cross B is not equal to B cross A. Well, that is quite evident from the direction perspective. That's because what is the value of A cross B? So if I say that A cross B is equal to C, right, as we, we saw in the previous slide, right? So if A cross B is equal to C, what would be the value of B cross A? So the magnitude will still remain the same but the direction will be reversed because in case of A cross B you saw in the previous slide that the thumb was pointing in the upward direction whereas if it becomes B cross A then the thumb will point in the downward direction. So in A cross B is C whereas B cross A is minus C. So therefore we say that it is not commutative. The second one is there is no change on reflection. So what happens in reflection? Let us suppose if this is a mirror if a vector goes this way. If vector A goes and strikes a mirror, that is reflection takes place, then what happens? It bounces back. So that means the vector A on reflection becomes minus A because the direction gets reversed, right? So upon reflection, A will become minus A and B will become minus B, right? So now what will happen to the cross product A cross B? So A cross B will become minus A cross minus B. So this minus minus will be plus. So this will be again remain the same. That is A cross B. That means there is no change on the cross product on reflection. The third one is it is distributive with respect to vector addition. So what is distributive property? Distributive property means that A cross B plus c. If you have three vectors a, b and c, then a cross b plus c is equal to a cross b plus a cross c. So this is also true only in case of addition because whenever we talk of the subtraction part, so whenever we talk of the subtraction part, the negative sign often causes some changes in direction. So this distributive property is also followed by vector product only in case of addition. So let us now look at the vector product of some unique vectors. So what are the unique vectors? Unique vectors are nothing but the three unique vectors corresponding to the x, y and z axis that is the i, j and k vectors. Right? So let us look at some of the vector products of these unique vectors. So what will be the vector product of i cross i? Now as per definition of cross product, a cross b is equal to a b sine theta. Right? So this a and b are the magnitudes of a and b. So here also what will be this? This will be i i sine theta. So what will be theta? Theta between i and i will be 0. So this will be sine 0. So that means i cross i will be 0. Similarly, what will be i cross j? It will be i j sin theta. Now, what is the angle between i and j? i and j is nothing but 90 degrees. So, this is sin 90. Now, what is the magnitude of i? It is 1. What is the magnitude of j? It is again 1 and sin 90 is also 1. So, this becomes 1. Now, in this case, what will be the direction? Now, if here 
as I mentioned before also that the direction of C will be such that it is perpendicular to both A and B. So in this case, if you want that the C should be such that it is perpendicular to I cap as well as J cap, so that means the direction should be along K cap. So this will be 1 K cap. Next is I cross K. So this will also be I K sine 90 degree. So this will again become 1 and what would be the uh, direction in this case that would be minus j cap that's because it is i cross k so if you curl your if you look at this figure and if you try to curl your fingers from i towards k so this is i and this is k so if you try to curl your fingers in this fashion you see that your thumb points towards this direction so it will be minus j cap Similarly, what will be J cross I? That will again be J I sine 90 degree. So that will again be 1. And again here J cross I. As I told you before also, if I cross J is, is represents the direction K, then J cross I will be minus K. Right? Because A cross B is equal to minus B cross K. J cross J will again be the similar scenario as i cross i so this will be equal to 0. What happens to j cross k? j cross k is again j k sin 90 degree. So that is equal to 1 and the direction will be i cap. Next is k cross i. i cross k was equal to minus j so k cross i will be equal to plus j. Again k cross j so here j cross k was equal to plus i. So this will be minus i. k cross k again will be similar to j cross j and i cross i. So this will be equal to 0. So this is how we determine the vector product of unique vectors. So let us now look at the mathematical form of vector product. So how do we actually calculate or evaluate the vector product of two vectors mathematically? So here my aim is to find out a mathematical expression for A cross B. So let us write both A and B in um, proper vector form. So A can be written as AX i cap plus AY j cap plus AZ k cap. Similarly B can be written as BX i cap plus BY j cap plus BZ k cap. So let us now try to calculate A cross B. So let me write down A as AX i cap plus AY j cap plus AZ cross BX i cap plus BY j cap plus BZ k cap. So now we will make use of distributive law. So this can be written as AX i cap cross BX i cap plus BY j cap plus b z k cap plus a y j cap cross b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z k cap plus a z k cap cross b x i cap plus b y j cap plus b z k cap Right? So now it is just simple mathematics and nothing else. So here you can see that i cross i is equal to 0. So this term will be equal to 0. So the next term is this term with this term. That is by j cap. So i cross j is equal to k. So this would be equal to a x b y k cap. Similarly this a x b z i cross k is equal to minus j. So this will be equal to minus a x b z j. So this has a minus sign now. So similarly we can do it for all the terms. So we get a y b x k cap plus a y b z i cap plus a z b x j cap minus a z b y i cap. So this can again be written as a y b z minus 
az dy i cap plus az dx minus ax dz j cap plus ax dy minus ay dx into k cap. So now therefore this can be written in the form of determinants in this way that is a cross b is equal to i j k a x a y a z b x b y b z. So this is how cross product of two vectors can be represented mathematically. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.